A recursive search through a graph is called a depth-first search. Depth-first search is a generalization of the recursive traversal algorithms that we used with trees. Just like tree traversal, depth-first search involves recursively visiting the neighbors of vertices, such that we visit neighbors of one immediate neighbor before we visit the next immediate neighbor. This is in contrast to the breadth-first search that we saw with unweighted shortest path algorithms, where we visited all of a vertex's immediate neighbors before we visited any neighbors of neighbors. A breadth-first search looks like expanding concentric rings. A depth-first search looks more like a tree traversal. In fact, tree traversal is just a special case of depth-first search, where each vertex in a graph has a maximum in degree of 1. In the more general depth-first search, however, we need to pay a little more care to some particular details. In a tree traversal, we don't need to explicitly keep track of which nodes we've visited, because there's only one way to get to a node. In the more general case of graphs, however, there can be multiple paths to a vertex. One trivial example is that of a cycle, which might lead us to visit a vertex an infinite number of times in a loop. We can stop ourselves from visiting a vertex multiple times by keeping track of the vertices we visited. Armed with that extra bit of information, which we can store in a table or even write in the vertex itself, we can ensure that we only visit each vertex once, and, if we use an adjacency list representation, the total operations can be kept to the order of the size of V plus the size of E. See if you can figure out why this is the asymptotic time complexity of the algorithm. In just a moment, we'll look at it together. Here's a sketch of the algorithm to do a depth-first search. First, we mark the current vertex as visited, and then we check all of its neighbors to see if they've already been visited. If not, we do a recursive depth-first search on them. In this algorithm, we can see that we only visit vertices that haven't been visited before. Also, we mark the current vertex as visited before we have any opportunity for recursion. Therefore, we can only ever visit the size of V vertices at maximum. Next, we observe that, in any connected graph, if we visit a vertex while there are n unvisited vertices, that visitation will cause another n-1 visitations to occur. This is true whether the graph is linear, radial, or some other topology. Every recursive depth-first search will cause another n-1 searches to occur, assuming only that all vertices are reachable from the current vertex. Finally, armed with this information, we can write a recurrence relationship for the time it will take to complete a depth-first search. This time is on the order of 1, for the marking of V as visited, plus the time to check out all of our neighbors. Inside of this loop, we see potentially many recursive depth-first search calls, but we've already said that we know what those add up to, the time it takes to visit n-1 additional vertices. What's left of the loop is checking all of a vertex's neighbors, which is on the order of the number of neighbors, which I'm calling E sub i, where i is the number of the current vertex. So, the total time to visit vertex i, with size of v vertices remaining, including i, is 1 plus the size of E sub 0 plus the time it takes to visit the size of v minus 1. We can use the same equation to expand out the time of the size of v minus 1 vertices, then the time of the size of v minus 2, etc., until we end up with the sum of all of those ones, 1 per vertex for a total of the size of v, plus the sum over all vertices of each vertex's edge count, which is just the number of edges in the graph. Depth First Search has many applications. In this video, we'll mention two, spanning trees and circuits. A spanning tree is a partial representation of a graph, which includes all of the vertices of the full graph, but only just enough edges, in the shape of a tree, to be able to reach all the vertices from a root vertex, or node. One kind of spanning tree, a minimum spanning tree, can be built using Prim's algorithm, which is almost exactly the same as Dijkstra's algorithm. It's called a minimum spanning tree because it involves minimum cost, or shortest, paths from a root node. However, we can also construct a spanning tree using depth-first search. In this approach, we perform a depth-first search and, anytime we find an edge to an as-yet unvisited vertex, we add that edge and vertex to our spanning tree. If we start with a graph containing disconnected components, we can repeat the process to end up with a spanning forest. Another application of depth-first search is finding circuits in a graph. The very first graph theory problem, postulated before there even was such a thing as graph theory, was finding a path through a graph that would pass through every edge once and end up back where it started. 
You may have seen this as a puzzle in which you need to draw a geometric shape without lifting your pencil or redrawing any lines. There are two variations on this problem, one in which you have to end up back in the place you started, and one in which you don't. Leonhard Euler solved this problem in 1736, giving us Euler tours and Euler circuits. Euler circuits are only possible when all the vertices in a graph have an even degree. Question, why is this so? Take a moment to think about it. It turns out, however, that an even degree is not just a necessary condition, it's sufficient. In any such graph, we can find an Euler circuit using repeated depth-first search. First, we pick a vertex, any vertex, and perform a depth-first search until we find an edge that leads back to where we started. This gives us a circuit. There's no guarantee that this circuit will go through all the edges in the graph, but it's a start. If there are unexplored edges in the graph, at least two of them will have to connect to a vertex that is part of our circuit. We can iterate along our circuit until we find a vertex with unexplored paths, and then follow the same depth-first search procedure to find another circuit that starts and ends at that vertex. We can then graph the newly found circuit onto our prior one, giving us a longer circuit. We can continue repeating this procedure until all of our edges have been found and integrated into a complete Euler circuit. If we're careful in our choices of data structures and algorithms, we can find Euler circuits in linear time, on the order of the size of V plus the size of E. Finding Euler circuits, which traverse every edge in a graph, is, thus, surprisingly easy in graphs that contain them. An analogous problem is finding circuits that contain every vertex in a graph. Such paths are called Hamiltonian cycles, and in general, it's not so easy to find them. In fact, it's hard. It's really hard. In general, it's really, really hard. How hard? We'll talk about that next time. That's depth-first search and a couple of applications for it, building depth-first spanning trees and finding Euler circuits. Next time, we'll talk in more detail about Hamiltonian cycles and just how hard a problem it is, in general, to find them.